Number six, which sorry, sign language, number six. <laughs> I forgot what number six is. Number 10. I forgot what I was gonna say. <laughs> I can't remember what I was gonna say. <laughs> Ooh, I can't get my words out. <laughs> Let me try it one more time. One more time. Hey everybody, and welcome back to Autumn Lee at Home. Today, I'm gonna go over 10 frugal tips with you that we use in our family that work wonders in saving us money. What does frugal mean? Frugal does not necessarily mean that you have to cut yourself completely off. It just means that you need to think about it before you buy it. So let's go ahead and get started. Number one, please don't hate me for saying this because this is not gonna be the most popular thing to say organizational products. It is such a popular thing right now to buy the latest and greatest organizational products. But really what you need to do is step back and truly think about what you actually need. That is one area that we save a lot of money on is I don't just go and buy the first thing that I see in the store that's an organizational product that I think is gonna make my life a lot easier and more organized. Do some of them make them more organized? Absolutely, but that's where you need to just pause and think about what you truly need and maybe wait a few weeks before going back and buying that item. And if you can't do that, just make sure you hold on to the receipt. I would be very careful with organizational products. It's so easy to get the latest and greatest pantry organizational bins and containers and closet containers because they're so pretty, especially on the box and on YouTubers, <laughs> videos, all of the above. It's so easy to fall into the trap of wanting to buy the next latest and greatest organizational product because we think that it's gonna make our lives a lot easier. Does it sometimes? Absolutely, but that's where you're frugal about it and just be very careful not to just buy it because it's what looks awesome in a splurge of a moment. Make sure that it's something that you're actually considering that you've been considering for a while. Number two, this is also not gonna be the most people's favorites, but I will say it has saved my family in particular hundreds of dollars a month. And that is cutting back on snacky foods. Instead of buying the name, name brand snack foods like Debbie Cakes or chips or crackers or anything like that, instead of buying those, make them yourself. We could save a lot of money. You can save, I save a lot of money when I don't buy name brand snacky foods. So instead of buying the pre-made peanut butter crackers, buy Ritz crackers or the Aldi brand Ritz cracker and go ahead and make your own peanut butter crackers. It doesn't take that much time. It does require a little bit of effort, but you know what? It saves you a lot of money because packs of crackers can be a few dollars each for maybe a 12 pack. But if you just buy a whole huge back box of Ritz crackers from Aldi and then use your favorite peanut butter, you'll all of a sudden have your favorite peanut butter snack. But same thing with other things. You could use fruit, vegetables, cut back on the snacky name brand foods. You will notice a big difference on your receipt when you go to the grocery store. Number three, the next thing I'm gonna talk about is house decorations. And this one hurts me so bad. There are so many things out there that I go to the store and I wanna buy but you have to think about it. Buying the first thing that jumps in your cart or that you see at the store is a splurge impulse. If you notice that there is a particular area in your house that you need a specific item, go to that store for a specific item. Don't window shop because if you go to Marshall's, and yes, I said Marshall's because that is one of my favorites because you can find some good deals for some really cute decorations be really careful. You're falling into that trap of not being frugal and saving your money or being diligent about being careful how you spend your money. So be very mindful of how you buy home decorations. Be very mindful of, oh, I've been looking for an item of this particular kind for this particular spot and this is what I need. That is okay. It's okay to spend your hard earned money. However, be frugal about it. Don't just go shopping for decorations because you have spare time. Number four, and this one, you guys are really not gonna like, but hang in there, because I have a point. So number four, don't buy soda, which kind of goes along with the snacky food thing. However, I can tell you that ever since my family stopped buying soda, and I am such a Mountain Dew person, I, I will be the first to admit I am addicted to Mountain Dew. All of my friends and family know it. I love Mountain Dew. Any chance I can get, I will buy some Mountain Dew. However, I will say and be the first to admit too that 
it saved us a lot of money when we stopped buying soda for the house. I still splurge and when I'm out working or when I'm out on a date or out at a restaurant with a friend that I don't do very often, that is a time where I indulge and I enjoy myself a soda. I know it is not very cost effective to do it at a restaurant these days because I think it's up to like, what, $3? Which is again, crazy to me. But if you don't buy soda from the store, it saves you a lot of money because when we were buying soda, I was drinking at least one to two cans of Mountain Dew a day, which I know is terrible and it is not healthy, which is a bonus for not buying it. Being frugal, saving yourself that money of not buying the soda here at home, but still getting to give yourself that allowance of being able to do it while you go out is wonderful because you have to be careful and again, not purposely try to create situations where you can get your soda fix. However, I would say that that is a way to save money because packs of soda have skyrocketed lately. So I would recommend not only are you saving money, but you're also being a lot healthier. I lost like 10 pounds when I started doing this. So I would strongly recommend that one. Number five. Number five is when you go to a store, try to buy the off brand. I know when you're grocery shopping, it's so easy to go for that name brand because we are all sticker snobs at some point or other with certain meals or certain items. Like we love our Jiffy peanut butter. We're Jiffy fans. Same thing with mayonnaise. We are Duke fans all the way for Duke mayonnaise. However, with items that you really don't care like ketchup, we're not a huge, we don't care to go for Heinz. It's not a huge deal to us to maybe switch to the off brand of ketchup that maybe is at Aldi. So start looking at your grocery list. I wouldn't try going to off brand everything all at one time. Be frugal about it. Start one thing at a time. And over time, you will see that there are off brands that you may even like more. Did I say that? Yes, I did you may actually like the off brands a lot more. I have found that I am that way. I have a couple of people that have commented on my last Sam's haul that said that they like the members mark trash bags a lot more than the actual trash bags. I had one person that commented that. So I'm excited to try them. One thing at a time, just try something new when it comes to off brand stuff. When you go to Aldi, don't shop the normal name brands that you're used to seeing. You're not gonna save money at Aldi doing that. If you go to Aldi, try to, buy, try to buy the name brand items that will help you save money. You'll notice that your receipt at Aldi is a lot less, which is crazy. It makes a big, big difference. So same thing with Food Lion, Aldi, Sam's. Sam's has the members mark. Walmart even has their own brand. So try to buy, like if you're going to buy noodles, you may think, oh, it's only a 25 cent difference and I'm losing the quality of it. Not necessarily. Have you ever tried the off brand? Sometimes they end up being a lot better. You never know. The only reason that the other one is more is because a lot of times it has more marketing. That's what the cost is being put into. So look into it. It doesn't hurt. And you will notice that the bill after you buy like 10 items that may be like 50, 50 cents to a dollar cheaper per item, you're saving a lot of money every time you go to the grocery store. All these little things add up. So if you're wanting frugal tips, think little things and over time they add up to a lot. Number six, don't shop maintain. What do I mean by that? I mean that in your house, if you have a free day, say all the kids are at school or you have a day on the weekend, like on a Saturday where you don't have any plans going on, instead of going out shopping, take that time to maintain things, fix things, maintain your home. So what do I mean by that even? I mean, taking toys from your kids, fixing them, sewing up princess dresses, which I have been known to do for all my brothers and sisters, as well as my kids. Sew up those princess dresses. Instead of throwing it out because it has a hole, teach yourself to sew it. Holes are easy to fix if you just figure out or have somebody show you. I'm sure that there's a little old lady that would love to help you learn how to sew a hole in a dress because that's such a simple fix, as well as putting batteries. Oh, the batteries change out all the batteries. Again, that's maintaining and taking care of the items that you have. So instead of taking that time to go buy more stuff to bring into your house, you're taking time out of your day to maintain and take care of what you've already bought instead of throwing it out. So there's other things that you can do as well, not just replacing batteries all the time. 
Also, if there's a room that you want to paint, or if there's a hole in the wall, or a scuff in the wall, any of those things, your oven, cleaning it, that is something I need to do. <laughs> but those type of things, instead of going out on that day, take that day to be like, instead of spending more money, let's be frugal and take care of what I already have in this house. Because then not only are you not adding more clutter to your house, but you're saving money because then you don't go out and buy 10 more items. You're taking care of what you already have. Number seven. Number seven is simple. This is not something that my husband and I do anymore. However, when we were really tight on money, we did it every single month. We wrote down a budget, which I know, I hear, I see all the eyes rolling now. Budgets are annoying. However, if you budget yourself a certain amount of money to spend in each category, use cash. That is my number seven, use cash. If you're using cash, then you see how much you physically have left as well as how much you're using. And then you even start thinking, oh, for all those math brain people out there like me, if I'm buying this pair of shoes that cost $60 or $90, or these days $150 for a pair of tennis shoes, how many hours am I having to work to earn that? It's making you think rather than quickly just swiping a card and not having to think about it. The cash makes you kind of slow down and pause and think about it. When my husband and I were super tight on money, I had a little divider and I carried around cash that then I was able to use from each category and I was able to see if we had extra in one category or that we could put towards savings or a Disney trip of some sort or if I didn't have enough and if I was about to run out. Those are all things that cash will help you do especially the thinking about how many hours it would take for me to work to pay for this item. It makes me question, is it really worth it? And half the time I would say no. Do my kids need shoes? Absolutely. Do I need shoes and clothes to wear? Yes, you need to take care of yourself. You do need clothes to wear. However, be frugal about it. Be mindful about it. Don't just buy the first thing off the rack because it was the first thing that was fast enough to grow, jump into your hand. So think about it. Number eight. We are on number eight, and this is a very simple one that you would think that a lot of people would already do, but I am so guilty of not doing it myself, and that is shopping your pantry first. So before you go grocery shopping, shop your pantry. That means make sure that you have your list and you go through your pantry, and instead of making your meals off of things that you have to buy all the items for, go through your pantry and see what you already have and what you can use. I know that sounds silly, but over time, things expire, they go bad, and then you end up having to just throw out all this good food that would have been able to be used if you had shopped your pantry first. So it saves you money, a lot of money. Every time you go to the grocery store, before going to the grocery store, try to take five minutes, just five minutes even, five minutes. So simple, such a good goal to have. Just take five minutes, pause, go look at your pantry, see what you maybe already have and can turn into a meal. And at the very least, I can promise you, you could probably make at least one meal, if not more than that. We could probably make a lot more than that if I actually took the time, which I do, to shop my pantry first. Do I do it every single time? No, I'm guilty of lapsing too. But again, frugal doesn't mean having to be black and white. It doesn't mean having to have only shopping your pantry or only buying items. There's a good in between and utilize that. Try to give yourself a goal of checking your pantry for five minutes before going to the grocery store and make your meal plan off of that. Number nine. Number nine kind of goes with number eight, make a list. When you go grocery shopping or even shopping, make yourself a list. It doesn't have to be on pen and paper. I do like pen and paper because I like the satisfaction of being able to mark it off. However, use your phone in the notes section. Make yourself a list, have a running list if you need to of the items as you use it. You can add it to your list on your phone in the moment. That way you never run out of stuff. You can always replenish it or at least you know you're about to run out of it and go ahead and write it down. By going into a store with a list, you can try to make yourself stick to the list and that will also save you money. I know it sounds crazy, but it does. It saves you money, a lot of money, because then you're not splurging on all these other things that you're like, oh, why don't we go ahead and get this, 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 and this? 
go ahead and put snacky items on the list. If you do have the budget for those snacky items, we don't always have that budget. I like to try to start making our snacky foods so that it's healthier items. You can actually see some right there on my counter that I made recently was chili, what was it? Chili, green chili, cheddar crackers, sourdough crackers. That's what I made him. And my son absolutely loves those, he eats those. So by me taking the time to make that, I was able to not only save money, cause that took pennies, and it was stuff that I already had in my pantry because I shopped my pantry first. But I was able to give my son a healthy snack and not have to buy snacky foods. But if you have the budget for it, put it on your list, the items, the snack foods, Pop-Tarts, whatever it is that you want, go into the store with that list and tell yourself, I am not gonna buy anything that is not on this list because if it's not here, then obviously I don't need it because I had sat down to think about the things that I needed. So go in with the list, try to stick to your list. Number 10, look at your account. I know that sounds crazy, but sit down and look at your bank account. And with a calculator, you don't have to be fancy about it. Just use your phone, use a piece of paper, just grab a random calculator, go through and add up, including cents. Don't leave off the cents, or if you do, at least round up. But count up and add up every restaurant, sit down restaurant, fast food restaurant, or coffee stop. I know that gets a lot of you out there. I am not a coffee drinker, but I could replace my coffee with the Mountain Dew subject and I would be right there with you guys. So coffee stops as well. QT stops, snack stops, whatever it is, add all of that up. You are going to be astounded. I know it takes a few minutes. Put on your favorite show, put on the Friends episode, put on your favorite movie and just sit down and try to do it while you're watching your favorite show. I promise you it will blow your mind how much you are actually spending on these items. It is crazy. My husband and I did this before we even had four kids. We now have four kids. And this for one month, for two of us, we spent over, I think it was seven, $800 in one month for just two of us. And this was way before COVID. So this was close to like nine or 10 years ago. I know we're getting old. However, if you sit down and do it right now with the prices of how everything is skyrocketing, if you're struggling with inflation, give me a thumbs up down below because everybody is. And that's what these frugal tips are for is to try to help you guys and support you guys to do the best you can with what you have. And it just, most of these are all just kind of stopping and thinking about it. They seem simple enough, but it's so hard to control that impulse. Now with this one, sit down with your favorite person, your best friend, your roommate, your husband, whoever it is, sit down with them and add up all your expenses of how much you ate at a sit down restaurant, a fast food restaurant, a coffee stop. Yes, coffee stops as well. All of it, add it all up. You will be, it will, it will blow your mind how much money you are spending on fast food. So instead of spending money on fast food, again, that number will make you pause and think about, do I really need fast food right now? So that is something that my husband and I recently did. We stopped and think, what fast food restaurant are we routinely stopping at that we don't need to anymore, especially as a family? So one of those, and it was my fault. I wanted it. It was a mental break for myself. After church, every Sunday, we stopped at Taco Bell. And I wanted to stop at Taco Bell because it was easy. It was on the way home from church. I didn't want to have to think about it because everybody's already tired and it's nap time for my kids or the youngest one. It's nap time. So I don't want to have to think about trying to get food ready really fast. You know what happened? We cut that out because that was 50 to $60 every week that we were spending. So that's over $200 that I was spending a month on that one restaurant stop a week. That is crazy. For our family of six, we were spending 50 to $60. And that was with most of the kids getting like taco, soft tacos and cheese roll-ups. Again, blows my mind that it cost 50 to $60 at Taco Bell for six people to eat. So by cutting that out, we're saving over $200 a month, which again, crazy, crazy. Saves you money all there, right there. So try to think every week, is there somewhere that I stop that I can cut out that will save me money? And you will find, yes, there is, there is a stop. And you know what I also found is my kids love the cheese quesadillas that I make every Sunday at home now too. 
they have no problems with it. I keep tortilla chips and make cheese quesadillas. And so I'm still not really thinking about it and we're getting home a lot sooner because we're not having to wait in line at Taco Bell. Thank you so much for joining me at Autumnly at Home. I hope these tips were helpful for you guys. If you have any frugal tips that your family uses that work really well, please comment below. This girl would love to know them as well as this community. We love tips and I really want to create a community that's going to be encouraging to one another as well as help each other. So please comment below. Please like, subscribe, and share. And thank you so much for joining us. I hope to see you guys next time.